This lesson deals with supplemental problem 3.4. You can find this problem in the course ebook in the chapter 3 supplemental problem starting on page 6. Given this circuit, could you solve for the mesh current I1, I2, I3, and I4 using the mesh current method of the lecture notes? This is a four step algorithm, and the first step is to assign the mesh currents, but we already have that done. So here is I1, I2, I3, and I4, all in a clockwise direction. Now I have current sources in my circuit besides resistors and voltage sources. I know that any current in this circuit is related to the mesh currents. There must be some relationship between this 1 amp and 5 amp source and the mesh currents of 1 through 4. Take a look at this one here, the 5 amp. The current's in this direction, and that agrees with I2, and it disagrees with I1. The 5 amp current is equal to I2 minus I1. And that's this equation right over here. Likewise, the 1 amp source, I3, is in the same direction, and I4 is in the opposite direction. 1 amp is equal to I3 minus I4. Now we have two equations in our four unknowns. We just need two more equations to be able to solve for the four currents. Step two in our algorithm is to apply Kirchhoff's voltage law around the meshes and solve for the relationships with the mesh currents. So I need to assign a voltage across every element. Since the current I1 is in this direction, I'll pick the plus and minus this way, although it's really arbitrary. Once you pick it, just stick with it. I'll pick the drop across here in this direction because I2 is going this way. I'll pick the direction this way for the three ohm resistor because the mesh current's going this way and likewise for I4 and the 4 ohm resistor, plus the minus this way. If I go around this mesh, I have a current source in the mesh, and I don't know the voltage across the current source. It just becomes another unknown. No Ohm's law kind of relationship. What I could do is don't include that in the, my going around the mesh. I'll go around the outer mesh here, where I just have resistors and voltage sources. So the rise in voltage is 10. The drop in this direction is going to be I1 times 1. The drop in this direction is I2 times 2 and then I have a drop of 6. I have a third equation in my four unknowns. Let's just clean this up here, bring the 6 over here, so I have 1I1 plus 2I2 is equal to 4. Same is true of this mesh over here. If I go around this mesh, I've got this current source, and again, I don't know the voltage across the current source, so it becomes another unknown. So let's go around the outer mesh. Take a look at that on the next page. I'll start at ground on the previous page. I have a rise in voltage of 6, and then a drop of 3 ohms times I3, and then a drop of 4 ohms times I4, and a drop of 10. I'm just going around that outer mesh on the left-hand side. Bring this over here, I have a minus 4 is equal to 3I3 plus 4I4. I have four equations and four knowns. You can put them together in any order you want. Our second equation, we had 1 was equal to 1 times I3 minus 1 times I4. The first equation we had was 5 was equal to minus I1 plus I2. This equation over here is minus 4 is equal to 3I3 plus 4I4. And on the previous page, we had 4 was equal to 1 times I1 plus 2 times I2. So if you have a 4 by 4 matrix, let's use MATLAB to find the answer. Call this just Y is equal to A times X. We have a mixture of units here, so I'm just going to use just some general symbols. This vector over here is going to be 1, 5, minus 4, and 4, semicolon separating them. Hit Enter, and you can see the entries match what I have here. And then my A matrix has got 0, 0, 1, minus 1, second row, minus 1, 1, 0, 0. Third row, 0, 0, 3, 4. And fourth row, 1, 2, 0, 0. When you hit enter, it echoes back the matrix. And you can just check the entries. If they're wrong, you can go back and change this with the arrow key. I want to solve for the unknowns I1 through I4. And so I'm going to say that X is going to be equal to the matrix A into Y, A backslash Y. And this is the notation in MATLAB for finding our matrix division. And we get four answers. First one's I1, I2, I3, and I4 as we've entered them. Lastly, step four is to complete the problem, and that's that I1 is equal to minus 2 amps, I2 is equal to 3 amps, I3 is equal to 0, and I4 is equal to minus 1. This was the same problem as we had in supplemental problem 3, 2, and we have the same results. You can see here the amount of work we did was a lot more in terms of a larger matrix, but you do get the same answer. And this is supplemental problem 3.4.